the Bible t tells us not to fear the, the terror that creepeth by night or that which flieth by noonday. And yet we do. We do. This is a little long, so I apologize, but I've never written this out before and never will again. So I figured I might as well tell the whole thing for myself, if no one else. First off, this is the only creepy, scariest thing that has ever happened to me in my life, which is probably why it stands out so much in my memory. In hindsight, the location and general isolation probably made it seem much scarier than it was. But at the time, it felt like I'd stumbled into the opening scenes of a full-on horror film. Anyway, here's the story. So just over 10 years ago, I was fresh out of college and had moved back to my parents' house for the free rent and food for nine months or so before I was leaving the state for graduate school. My parents are super chill and gave me my own space in the house. But being a 22-year-old single guy and living at a house in the sticks, and they had just recently moved about 40 miles south of a major Midwest city, it certainly was not ideal. But I didn't have any other options. So I started looking for some work, more to pass the time than to save up some money. Anyway, summer turned to winter, and I still hadn't found anything solid. But by then, I desperately needed to spend more time out of my parents' house. So I took a part-time gig doing some light bookkeeping for a small business owner guy that my dad knew. I didn't really want to do it since it didn't pay much, and it was short-term, and wasn't even really an office setup, but... Again, since my parents lived in the middle of nowhere Midwest, I mean, think acres and acres of farms, I knew I had limited local opportunities to make some cash, and this guy was going to pay me under the table as well. About that same time, a friend of mine in the city said that if I just paid him $200 a month and helped clean up, he'd basically let me crash in his living room until I was ready to move out of state. That was all I needed to hear. I took the job. So my dad's friend's family had a construction-type business. They helped out with building stuff a little, but it was ultimately more focused on renting out a few bobcats and large augers they owned, also other various drills and odds and ends like generators and other low-level construction or farming equipment that someone in the area couldn't afford to purchase but needed to use from time to time. This was a small mom-and-pop type thing where everyone knew everyone, and the office only opened on days when someone was coming by, it was just generally a mutually beneficial situation for the business owners and the locals. Since I had minored in a business-adjacent area and my dad recommended me, they trusted me to go there for about 15 to 20 hours a week and check and file the rental forms, make sure nobody missed a payment date if there was a payment plan in place, answer an email or two, discussing prices with customers and availability, etc. Super easy gig. The old building where I worked was about, I think, 90 years old and at the top of this little hill. And the downstairs used to be an old country bar until the 1970s when this family bought it cheap, cleared out the bar, and fenced in the property to use its parking lot area to store all their rental equipment and gear. I could generally come and go as I pleased, work any hours I wanted to as long as the work got done, and if things were slow and there weren't any rentals for a couple of days, I'd usually go in after 7 and stay until around midnight or 1, since I knew that I'd be alone and could listen to music loud and take my time and all that. The office where I worked was on the second floor of the building, above the old bar, and it looked out onto the long driveway. From my seat, I could easily see out the window and once or twice saw a family of deer or raccoons scamper by, and I always glanced out when I saw movement since it was very noticeable. The place was incredibly remote, very still and quiet, so if something unusual occurred or if something felt off, I definitely noticed it. One night during winter, it had snowed a few inches, and my dad told me to stay in because the roads were bad. But I had an old SUV, and more than that, just really wanted to get out of the house. So I went into work at about 8 p.m. and was going to stay until just after 1. I always left the gate open at the bottom of the hill, since believe me when I say that no one ever showed up at night, since we were literally in the middle of nowhere. 
I think the nearest occupied house was about two miles down the road. And to even turn into our short road, you had to only be coming to our specific building and probably know it was there beforehand. It was a local only type thing. Very small, since the family had inherited a lot of money, we're pretty sure, and kind of did this rental thing on the side. Basically, someone would never just get lost and end up at our building. So I'm jamming away to some Fallout Boy. <laughs> yeah, everyone makes mistakes when they're young. And I was having some coffee and kept glancing out at the snow outside here and there, since one of our garage's streetlights reflected onto the ground at the gate, and it was causing the light to shine off the snow in a really cool dare I say pretty way. At one point around midnight, I went downstairs to the big bathroom to do my bathroom business, and then came back upstairs and got settled back into my work. I probably did about five minutes of work when I glanced outside and saw a huge imprint of something in the fresh snow just below the light. It seemed like it must have been a huge dog or a substantial animal had just rolled around on the ground there on its back or something like that. Since I didn't notice it just 15 minutes before, it had to have happened while I was in the bathroom, or maybe when my back was turned, since I would have seen that type of movement for sure. I shook it off and assumed that a dog or maybe even a farm animal had gotten loose and maybe was attracted to the light or something. Who knows? And this was common. It was that type of area. At around 2 in the morning I was leaving, and as always, got out of my car to lock up the gate, and to be honest, I had pretty much forgotten about the imprint in the snow. But when I looked down, I was shocked to see that it wasn't just something that disturbed snow. It was undeniably the imprint of a human-made snow angel. If you don't know what a snow angel is, it's when kids lie on their back in the snow and push their arms and legs back and forth, so when they get up, it looks like the outline of an angel. Say, <laughs> I used to do that when I was a kid. So I 100% knew for sure that that's what this was. And it was deliberately made underneath the light post. But it wasn't from a kid. It was from a very large person, or at the very least, a normal-sized adult wearing tons of layers of big winter clothing. I looked up and saw what I already knew, that whoever had made this snow angel could easily look up and have seen me through that window. So they must have waited for me to head downstairs to make this angel. Now, I definitely would have seen or heard if someone had drove up to our building, even if I was in the bathroom. So I knew someone had to have walked deep into the freezing cold and snow for a few miles, stopped in front of our building, and then do a snow angel in the small amount of time I wasn't sitting in front of my desk. I glanced around for tracks in the snow and saw that there was one set that led to the nearby woods to the right of the building. So it was clear the person didn't use the road, but instead came from the opposite side, which made me instantly uneasy, since that side was just trees and darkness for miles and miles. I was definitely a little freaked out now once I realized that someone had just been this close to me secretly in the middle of the woods, and I looked around but didn't see anything amiss at all, and now just wanted to get the hell out of there. When I got back in my car and drove a few feet, I realized that my boss would be there in like four hours and might see the snow angel and assume I did it, since he probably assumed I kept the gate locked while I was there. It wouldn't have been that big of a deal at all, but I was young and felt like I might be made fun of by him, if nothing else. So I opened the gate back up real quick, ran over and kicked the snow around so it hid the angel. I locked it up again and went back to my car. I should note that this is what really happened at this moment but I almost lied here and said something else since it seems fake, since I assume the average person wouldn't get back out of their SUV and not just flee in their car because they'd be embarrassed about a snow angel. But at that time, I was insecure and cared a lot about what others thought. So unfortunately, this is what I did. Also, I wasn't exactly fully terrified at this point, even though it was certainly unsettling. I just thought it was really weird and could have been an illegal hunter, even though hunting at night in the cold didn't make much sense. Either way, the imprint was made two hours earlier, and I assumed they were long gone. But that's when I heard it. While I was getting into my SUV, there was the loudest high-pitched laughing coming from the woods. It almost sounded like a fake laugh, like the witch in The Wizard of Oz or something, like someone was doing it fake on purpose to show they weren't scared of me, 
or to see how I'd react at all once I knew they were there laughing at me on this property. It was close enough that I knew they could probably see me, but I couldn't see them at all since, other than the streetlight I was under, there was no illumination. After a few seconds of laughing, they stopped, and then it was just silence everywhere, except for my heart beating through my ears. Then the laughing started again, though louder this time, more like screaming and laughing combined. I sort of froze for just like five seconds, listening in a panic. Now, I spend a lot of time in that area, and I know what coyotes and foxes sound like at night with their high-pitched screeches during mating season, so I can't completely logically rule that out. But to me, it honestly felt like it was an adult man trying to emulate a woman laughing, like someone was deliberately trying to make a fake scary shriek laugh in order to scare someone. <laughs> well, it fucking worked. After that five seconds, I immediately filled with adrenaline, got in my car and drove the hell away from there as fast as I could without sliding off the road. Back at home, I was up all night trying to figure it out and told my parents the story when they woke up. After talking it out, we all decided it was one of two things. It was either my brain somehow convinced itself the snow formation was angel-shaped when it was really just caused by some animal, and then the snow tracks and laughing were just a coyote or red fox. Though I don't think that's what it was. What I truly believe, the second thing, is that some local was out walking around for some reason and decided to mess with me. I didn't have any close friends in that area that would do this, and if they did, they would have certainly brought it up to make fun of me for speeding away in terror. I found out later that the nearest house was a super old couple, so I highly doubt that it was one of them, which means whoever it was went out in the woods in the night in the freezing cold just to mess with a stranger. I don't have any mental issues or a family history of them. I didn't do drugs. I mean, I drank socially at that time, but certainly didn't that night. I also don't believe in the paranormal, so I never once gave that a thought. In my heart, I know someone was out there. I worked there another six weeks or so and never had a single issue, though I knew where my boss kept his gun and I always made sure it was there when I started my shift and I certainly always locked the gate from then on. Thinking about this experience that night, the part that freaked me out the most was that he had to have waited around for me to leave for about two hours just to do that laugh. I mean, he didn't know me. I could have been crazy and the type of person to get mad and try to find him and attack him. Yet, he didn't seem scared or to care at all when he tried to mess with me. For some random dude... This is probably a story he tells from his point of view to make all of his friends giggle hysterically. But for me, that dude, the one I call the angel in the snow guy, the one with the laugh I'll never forget, let's not meet. A friend and I went driving to camp in Oregon on Highway 199 in the fall of 1985. We didn't want to stay at a pay site, so we pulled off onto a side spur road in dense forest and set up a tent. We had our two Malamute cross dogs with us who had been by our sides in many backcountry adventures before. As we set up our sleeping bags in the tent, the dogs began growling very menacingly with their hair up full on their backs. We thought there might have been a bear around and worried that they would take off after it and it'd be difficult to catch. So we left them outside anyway and crawled into our bags to sleep. Then, the dogs began whimpering and trying to claw their way into the tent. We nervously let them in, and not long afterwards, we began to hear howling. First, just like one voice, but then followed by many voices. I would estimate that the sounds came from about a hundred yards away. It was reminiscent of hearing a coyote pack or wolf pack, but these were not canine voices. They ranged in pitch from childlike to adult male and higher female voices. It sounded like a really loud frat party in the middle of nowhere on a stormy, blustery night in the dark. It sounded like people were talking very loud, yet howling at the same time. And I've had many other experiences hearing coyote packs, and that is not what we heard. I have no further explanation for what it was, and we just braved it out through the night 
and then got the heck out of there in the morning. The second experience I had was at the Avenue of the Giants. It was with the same friend while we were hiking a trail there. It was again in the fall of 85, about a month later than the first encounter. We had a map with us and decided to cut a loop short by going cross-country through the dense redwood forest. Not long after we got started, the dog we had with us, one of the same dogs we had before, lunged out full on his leash and began dragging my friend up a steep incline. We reached the top and noticed large, foot-shaped impressions, maybe 14 to 18 inches long and like 8 inches wide. They were all in the duff below. Above us on the length of ground the dog had drug us through, branches were snapped off clean up 10 feet high on the trees, and we made our way back to the main trail with no further incident. The most striking thing was the odd behavior of the dogs. Anyone who has owned a Malamute knows they are very bold and that they basically aren't afraid of anything, especially when there's more than one of them. When the dogs near the Oregon experience tried to claw their way into the tent, it sent shivers up my spine, and I gotta say I didn't get much sleep that night. Again, with the incident at Richardson Grove, the dog actually stood up on its hind legs and walked while lunging forward up a steep bank dragging my friend who weighed about 170 pounds with him in pursuit of this thing that had left big footprints in the duff. Never had that dog do that before or since, in spite of many wilderness adventures, encounters with bear, elk, deer, or etc. The first incident again was about late October 1985. The second was early December of that same year. 